Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. A working lurcher, or a lurcher, let's say not a working, because not everybody works with dogs, but they are a working breed. They're a purpose crossbred dog. People come up to me and say, I've got a purebred lurcher. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no such thing as a purebred lurcher. This is a dog that's bred between a running dog, a greyhound, a whippet, saluki, and either a terrier bleed, collies. So you see they come in all shapes and sizes, lurchers. We've got a pedigree saluki there in the front. Make a good base for a working lurcher. They've got fantastic stamina, these dogs. They're bred in Egypt to cause desert hares and antelope. So they can run in 30, 40 degrees on the sand. Over here they find it quite easy to run game because it's nowhere near as warm as it is in Egypt. The big red fawn dog, that is a Saluki Greyhound. So you've got the little dog in the front of Saluki, put that back to a Greyhound, that's what you get. You get a bit more acceleration and speed. Saluki are very conservative in the way they run. They've got a very loping gait, and that's why they've got the stamina. Put a bit of Greyhound in there, it makes it just a bit more drive, and they've got a bit more acceleration. And then of course we've got the little rough dogs behind, their bedding and touch. The little blue, smoky blue one is actually a purebred Bedlington and Terrier. Put that with a whippet, basically then produces the two little dogs that Sarah's got on the lead there, the little fawn and the little black. And because they are quite varied, because they are crossbred, the little black and tan smooth coated dog is actually a little sister to the little black rough coat. The mum is the little rough fawn. So even in litters you get a very different sort of, you get almost a different breed of dog because they are a crossbred. Now they are an ancient breed. Running dogs are an ancient breed. You've seen the gun dogs here all weekend. They're quite a modern breed compared to the lurchers. Because there's no reason for a gun dog until the gun was invented. Makes sense. So these dogs, working dogs, working on man, with no tools, no guns, would be putting meat on the table. During medieval times, it was illegal to take the king's deer. So the commoners, I think, used to breed a greyhound, because if you had a greyhound, the soldiers, the king would send his men round and they would sever the toes off for the dog, render it unable to run and catch a deer. Very macabre, you know, we've moved on a long way since then. But, so they would then breed with a herding dog. And we think it's more like the bearded collie, which is an older breed than the border collie, giving it a very heavy coat, disguising that race of shape, but it was intended for purpose a lurcher. It had the speed and hunting instinct to take the deer. There's also an area in Smithfield, in Norfolk rather, called Smithfield, and they said that there was a, a particular breed called a Smithfield Collie. We don't think that's true actually, it's not a Smithfield Collie. We think it was a lurcher. Very collie saturated, lots of collie in there, so it had the instinct to drive the stock to market, but it had a dash of ground in there, so it wanted to chase small ground game, catching the drove of his dinner. We're not quite sure how they start, but we know they're old. But the modern day lurcher, working lurcher, utility dog almost, it's a very versatile dog. You can go to the game fairs, you can show them, you can race them, we're going to show you some fast dogs very shortly, Maggie Orr's here with her racing dogs, and you can work them. And that's what I'm going to show you now, hopefully, with a collie, little collie greyhound. If anybody would like to leave the ring, thank you. All right, this dog's three-quarter greyhound, one-quarter border collie. She looks like a little greyhound, really. Now, she's only 18 months old. She's done a little bit of light work. Just a black one, let her off, yeah, Luna. Luna. Good girl. As you can see, she's quite young and bouncy. But what I'm going to try and show you, she's only done this this weekend. Unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, I lost one of my dogs that used to come out ferreting with me. So we're trying to train this dog to do the same in Mark. Because if I go out ferreting on a Sunday morning, there's holes and you'd set all these nets up and nothing's bolts. It's a waste of time, innit? So we take these dogs along and they've got really good noses. Luna, she's waiting for you to go out there. She's done this before. Hang on. young lady. So, there's a rug, there's a barrier with nothing in. She'll sort of walk around it with me, she's not that bothered. Let's see what her body language does when she can smell something in there. There's a rabbit skin in there. 
Can you see what she's doing? She's standing there, she's marked and she's not moving. So when she did this on a Sunday morning, I'll think, right, there's rabbits down there, get the ferrets in. And as soon as, as soon as you put the ferrets in, of course, what happens? A rabbit bolts. And off she goes. <laughs> and she retrieves it. Very quickly, good kid. Oh, yes, you need to slow down, kid. Right, retrieving. Steady, steady, I'll get you with that. Wait, wait, wait. and I'm not chasing the dog around the field trying to get the rabbit off it. So, OK, off we go again, Paul. Perhaps she goes a bit of a dip there. She's jumped that. And here she comes again, watch the dip. Good girl. Good girl. Beat it then. Good girl. Good girl. Boy, just wait. Calm down. That's a good girl. Right. So, let's just move it over here a minute. So, look, mind that dip. The other thing, of course, we do go lamp, but I can't show you how we go lamping because we do it at night. On a dark, windy night, that's probably a little bit of drizzle. We've got like an artificial light, we illuminate the rabbits, and the dog chases cats and retrieves. But it's the middle of the afternoon here at Sunny Glenham, so I can't really do that. But what we also do is, you know, when we go out for a walk across the fields, and then you see she marks the rabbit lines, if there's a rabbit in a bush, she'd do exactly the same lot. She'd go up to the bush, and just wait there motionless, and we'd probably get a terrier or something, and put the terrier in the bush, and it'd flush a rabbit ball, and she'd go again. <laughs> okay, Neil. Okay, that's Luna Lee. She deserves around round of applause, I think, running around in all this heat, don't you? Right. We'll get to, we'll put Kira back. Are we going to get a, a, sorry, Luna back? It's the microphone. Good girl. Okay, I'll just take this back down, Paul. I'll just come up from the game back then. Right, okay, so, versatile, work in lurches, or lurches in general are versatile. As we said, you can go showing, you can race them, you can do obedience competitions, but they are work and breeze. But they do. They are versatile. And what I'm hopefully going to try and show you now, I'm going to bring a little rough coated dog in in a minute, called Akira. She's five years old. She's a Bedlington Whippet Greyhound. She's rough coated Brindle. What a lot of people think that's a lurch. You think probably the other one, Luna, was a Greyhound. But we are, if you've seen all the gun dogs here today, I'm lucky that my brother is a keeper. So we get to go out on the pheasant shoot with these lurches. So we do train them to pick up. So you have to train them directions. You train them to jump obstacles, like you would with a gun dog. Now it's probably not quite as clean and clinical as a gun dog would be, because they're not real gun dogs, are they? But they do a very functional job. And I got told off yesterday by all the gun dog people that I'm camping with, you didn't do the left and right's right. You should call the dog back, but hey, this is virtue, it's not a gun dog, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Okay, Kira, come here. Come here. Wait. Wait. Wait there. Wait. Wait. Kira, wait there. Wait. Now, could she look in for that one? I'm going to send her that way. Good. Yeah, leave it. And then we're going to send her off for the other one. So she does know her left and right. 
This is more than what I can say for me. Good girl, right? Then, what have we got to do? We said we've got to train her to jump, haven't we? So, send you a little jump. These dogs can jump about probably about five or six feet from the standing start. Wait there. Wait there. Wait. If they don't jump and the rabbit runs under a gate, wait, eh? wait. If the dog doesn't jump the obstacle, the rabbit's going to get away. You're not getting a head count. You're not doing a job of pest control for the farmer. OK, Kira, get on. Off she goes. She's going to find it. Oh, there it is. Right. OK, Paul. Ah, uh, big girl. Very gentle. See, she's took it very gently. But she's brought it back. Good okay, girl, well done. OK, and of course, she's just leave it. She's just picked a pheasant up. But of course, every now and again, there is a bit of ground game on shoot. And you're not allowed to shoot ground game. But if I've got a lurch with me, off we go, Paul. There's a rabbit in the shoot. So she does everything. She'll pick the pheasant up. Then there's a rabbit on the shoot. She'll catch it for me. And of course, retrieve again. Good girl. Thank you. OK, that was a killer, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to speed things up a bit more. We're going to get Maggie all in from Warwickshire and show you some racing dogs. Good girl, Akira. Oh, it's warm out here, kid, isn't it? We don't normally sweat like this when we're lambing to do it. It's a little... Oh, good girl. chase laws as well, like their little racing whippet over there. Well, that's it. Right, now we've got to be a bit careful, the ground's a bit uneven. We had a bit of a accident with one of Maggie's dogs on the first day. It's fine, it's sound. He's running today, but there's that real bad dip there. So I've tried to set it up so we can miss that dip. So, this is Kyla and Hamish. They're both whippet greyhounds. They race what they class non-pedigree. So it's not a pedigree greyhound, it's not a pedigree whippet, it's a non-ped. You can see one looks very much more like a greyhound, the black and white dog. The other is much more like a whip. Oh, you're going to do it. Oh, catching me out. Right, this is Tay and Zed. Now, Zed, number five, Maggie's called it Zed because she said it's her last dog. But the trouble is, there's another 25 letters in the new alphabet, Maggie, and then we know that. And number three is Tom, the rough dog. Now, a lot of people think a rough dog's not as fast as a smooth dog, there's more greyhound. In the smooth dog, let's see if we can prove that wrong. Okay, Paul, when you're ready, here we go. Number five, number three, rough or smooth. Off they go. And he's a clever dog, Kate Taranala. And you can see so much rough got there. Rough got it there. We're slowing down with these bullies because these dogs can run at over 35 miles an hour, these racing, racing dogs. In fact, the, uh, the land speed record for a racing greyhound, which is the fastest zone canines a man, is 43 miles an hour. But uh, if we try running these fast dogs in a straight line up there, because they are really focused on racing, they absolutely love it, they probably wouldn't stop when they got to the end. So we put the bends in, they don't get up to full speed, but you can see how quick they can accelerate off from a standing start as they go around the bend. 
And of course, this is how rabbits run. Rabbits don't run in a straight line, ladies and gentlemen. When a dog's chasing them, they evade as best they can. Now, when we talk about pest control, if you saw my dogs retrieving, they retrieve back live to hand. They're soft mouths. They don't kill the rabbit. They don't damage the rabbit. Otherwise, they can eat it sell it myself. They bring it back live to hand, and I, as a handler, dispatch it as quickly as possible. Okay. So, we'll have one more heat, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to run Hamish and Kyla, the two long pet racing dogs. And ladies and gentlemen, that will be the lurcher demonstration over here. On the third day, Blender Palace 2014. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you didn't know much about lurches, I hope you've maybe learned a little bit more about it. I do apologise for droning on, but I am very passionate about working lurches. They do get a lot of bad press. We try and tell people, you know, they're good dogs and there's good people that own them. OK, Maggie, this is the last run for the lurches here at Blenheim Palace 2014. It's Hamish, it's Kyler. Two, one, off we go, Paul. Just number one, the logo.